just wanted to stay over and be a part and hear your pa your pastor. Does he preach here? <laughs> he, uh, amen. Does, he said, does he? <laughs> amen. Uh, this morning as I woke up, <clears throat> and it'd be good actually maybe you give me some water. My, anyhow, <clears throat> thank you, ma'am. Uh, such a such a gift actually is to the body of Christ to serve and uh, she's constantly running trying to make sure we got everything that we need but I begin to hear the Lord I say God how do I follow up what what you did and said last night <clears throat> if I'm called on to say anything and I heard the Lord say uh, tell them well let me read it it's in Jude 20 uh, Jude Jude is the only one, only one chapter in Jude, and it's Jude 20, verse 20, and he says, and he says, but ye beloved, and say so he's got to talk about talking about you now because he calls you beloved. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on, look at somebody and say, I'm his beloved. Yeah. Barbara already got up and told us that. Yeah. See, but ye beloved, building up yourselves. <clears throat> Say yourselves. Yourself. I, this reminds me of my <clears throat> raising my children because they learned uh, learned early. I think Matthew was <laughs> three when he, uh, whenever I lay in the bed holding him with a high fever and and my head saying, "You better take him to the doctor." And I'm I'm laying there and you know no insurance, full time ministry on the road and all this. This stuff and not not now let me get let me tell you there's nothing wrong with doctors as long as you don't put your faith there in doctors yeah. hello uh, but so they learned that that if they go to dad dad's going to pray God and they still uh, when my son was laying in the hospital with COVID last year. Uh, there, there's text. Dad pray. They're telling me that Dad pray. Dad pray. Dad pray. Dad pray. But there comes a time that we've got to establish our own faith. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And <clears throat> I see it all the time where people look to the pastor, they look to the minister, they look, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we need agreement. I, there are some things I need agreement with right now. My beautiful wife helps me with that a lot of times. <laughs> but there's some times that we need agreement with somebody else in the body of Christ, with other ministry, with other, other people. But if you're not walking on your own faith, how can I expect you to agree with me? Yes. Yes. If I find somebody that they're standing on their own faith that I know they can agree with me and we can, we can uh, uh, expect God yes. to do something that's beyond our capability. Yes. <clears throat> I'm looking right now at, at things God has opened up for us and my head says, and I don't really want to say this word because my wife reminds me it's not in God's vocabulary. My head says impossible. But my spirit says all things are possible Amen. to him that believes. So we've got to build up our, let me read it because I, I, I twist it all up if I don't read it. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your, somebody say your. your. Watch how, what he calls your faith. Now look at somebody and say he's talking to you, so listen up. Come on, on your most holy faith. Say, my most holy faith. My most holy faith. It's your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Now let me pause right here. Because sometimes I pick up in, in people that whenever God's filling us with the Holy Ghost, that there's some that says, well, I really don't need it. I'm doing okay without it. I really don't need to speak in tongues. And, you know, speaking in tongues in itself, 
you know, I know people that's went into services and they, because they were going in there to mock and make fun, they went in there and they start, started doing some kind of jabberish and making out like it was uh, was tongues. That it's not the tongues in itself; it's that what comes with the tongues and how uh, uh, up in you something begins to transform. Amen. Amen. I, I still major at times on being born again. Sometimes we as kingdom folk uh, want to get you know, just bypass that. I don't do it every time, but, but many times I'll start off if I'm doing a program or something where I know I've got such a broad, uh, a broad audience. I'll start out because you can't. Why, why sit for 30 minutes and preach to somebody? Or an hour or whatever, preach to somebody that, that it's impossible for them to see or enter into what you're preaching. Mm -hmm. yes. Come on. Mm -hmm. Unless you are born again, you cannot see or enter into the kingdom of God. Yes. So, so I major in getting people to the place where they can hear me because I won't be able to hear me. I got something to say. Right. Amen. Somebody bless the Lord. So if you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus, let me tell you, it's a whole new world. Amen. Amen. Once you get born again, and people try to make it complicated. You know, I, I get people sometimes that they get on there and say, well, there's more to this being born again than, than believe. Well, I, I, in my, according to my Bible, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you're saved. Yes. Hello, church. Yes. See, so I'm not going back, you know, we, we, we're not, not going to go back and just build on that, but we don't need to forsake that foundation either. But as far as the, the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, how are you going to pray in the Holy Ghost if you don't have the Holy Ghost? Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hello, church. I'm trying to stir a hunger in you. Yes. Come on, I'd like to stir some desperation in you. Yes. Somebody love the Lord. Our trouble is we, 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 we want to do it like somebody else. You're not going to do it like somebody else. No, no, way, yes. no, way, no way, no way. Sister Christine come up last night, and, 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 and when she started praying, I heard the, I heard the voice of the, uh, those Akai mothers all the way back in Thailand uh, that the sounded just like them whenever I play it on a, I've got it on video. Uh, I, can, I can play it for you, and you'll hear, uh, and, and I almost want to jump up and interpret or something. Because I knew it was a language she didn't know. Have you ever been to Thailand? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you may go sometime. But, <clears throat> but the Holy Ghost begins to reach into areas. We like to tell stories about how God transformed me into another place and I was able to see this and pray for somebody there and all. But can I tell you, whenever you're praying to the Holy Ghost, she was not even, not just right here this morning, kneeling in that floor. Yeah. She was praying in the Holy Ghost and touching nations. Yeah. Yeah. I do it every day. Because there, there's where my heart is. Mm -hmm. My heart's to the body of Christ. We pray uh, at least twice a day uh, in English at our, at our table for the body of Christ. For, for those of you sitting right here in this place today and, and, and for uh, the body of Christ all over the place and those that are helping us uh, in ministry. Because, uh, you know, like I say, my head says impossible. My heart says nothing is impossible. Amen. With God. Somebody bless the Lord. So building up yourselves. And praying in the Holy Ghost. And Christine's not going to go back home and just quit. She's going to pray in the Holy Ghost every day. See the trouble people get so caught up on the language. It's, it's not your language. That's right. Yes. And you're trying to understand what you're going to say before you say it. I don't understand what I say when I pray. In the Holy Ghost, somebody bless the Lord. Why? Because I'm praying, I'm talking to God. It's His language. Yes. 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 <laughs> Something just happened. Yes. Between right here in this pulpit and heaven. Yes. We just woke some angels up. Yeah. Hallelujah. God just began to do something uh, in the heavens to say. There's a little group of people in Bath, South Carolina today. 
that's needing you to dispatch and be part of what God's going to do in 2023. Yes. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Somebody, somebody's pulling on God right now. Hallelujah. Let God begin to stir that in you. Building up your faith. Come on, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. What happens when I pray in the Holy Ghost? My faith begins to be launched and goes out there and says, what does God want today? And guess what? Where's Gene? What's that little thing on your necklace say? Superman. Superman. See, some, somehow, whenever, come on, we, we, you know, that's a, that's a fiction, but what I'm talking about is not fiction. Amen. Hallelujah. There's something that happens whenever you begin to build up yourself on your most holy faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> there, there's a scripture, I think I heard it yesterday when Cheryl was playing, on the way, playing the, the, the Bible program on the phone, and, uh, and God says, who is, who is it that would be my equal? And I sat down here this morning. Don't throw nothing at me. And there's no way I claim I, no way I claim that I'm God or anything else. But let me tell you what. I believe it's his desire that we understand, come on, that we have the mind of Christ yes. and think it not robbery to be equal with God. Amen. Yes. Now, at least that's what the book says. Mm -hmm. yep. Come on, that's what the Logos of God says. And whenever it's, ri it's written, there is an eternal word that's going to stay eternal forever. Amen. So what, he want, what he's saying to us, build up your faith. Yes. Come on, build up yourselves on your most holy faith and speak, come on, uh, 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 and pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't just speak in tongues. Let the Holy Ghost pray through you. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you will never miss praying the will of God. Yeah. Somebody bless the Lord. Uh, turn with me to the book of Acts. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Acts, the ninth chapter, in verse 31. Thank you, Father. Now, I, you know, I, sometimes I think, you know, we're, we're, I can only be me. Is it okay if I be me? Yes. Yeah. I remember the time back in the tent meetings, I had to, I mean, I'd get out there and I was, I was a machine gun preacher and I'd, I'd get out there and run the, you know, climb the tent poles if I needed to. Something, just something. And that's all right. I may do it again. Don't, don't mark that out on me. But let me tell you this. Uh, right now, I want God to build up the body of Christ. Right now, there's something in me that's saying unless we get a hold of God and let God begin to build us up, uh, hallelujah, to the point that, come on, I, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of a, a, a weak a mamby pamby church is still trying to hold on to those things in the past. It's time that we grow up in the Holy Ghost and in God. Thank you, Jesus. Then have the churches rest. Somebody say rest. rest. There's got to be a rest for the church, not not a, a just continually uh, laboring. That's why we've got to move beyond just a legalistic uh, 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 mindset of the church, a, a bunch of do's and don'ts. And let me tell you, grace does not excuse us from sin. Nobody, nobody's saying that. But what grace does, it empowers you to overcome sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's no longer you that lives, but it's Christ now that lives in you. And come out, I tell you, he doesn't sin. Amen. That's right. Come on, somebody bless the Lord. So if it's Christ that lives in you, he said, then have the churches rest throughout Judea and Galilee and Smyrna. Samaria, my eyes are watering, and uh, anyhow, and were edified. Somebody say edified, yeah. and walking in the fear of the Lord, and the the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say comfort. comfort. 
The Holy Ghost is the Comforter. Somebody bless the Lord. See, so can you see that the Holy Ghost is the Comforter? So now as a kingdom citizen, somebody hear me, I'm as a kingdom citizen in here. Come on. I'm, uh, <laughs> they might call me an alien. <laughs> but I'm legal. Somebody bless the Lord. Everything that's outside the kingdom of God is, uh, is what's got a problem. Somebody bless the Lord. But see, <laughs> if we're citizens of the kingdom, we have, you know, America, uh, it's, it's amazing. I know my rights. <laughs> You know, every time uh, you, you, you can uh, go rob a bank and somebody comes along to try to stop you, I know my rights. Somebody bless the Lord. Well, in the kingdom of God, if we know our rights, I have a right. I've... Somebody asked, do, 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 you, uh, do you have your vaccine? Have you been vaccinated? Uh, I say, yeah. Is it FIFA uh, or what's that other one? And, uh, uh, and I said, no, it's, it's, it's BOJ, the BOJ vaccination. Well, what is that? I said, blood of Jesus. Amen. So I bless the Lord. Come on. And I said, um, furthermore, I, I've had my, my booster. It's called the SOJ. The stripes of Jesus. Yes. So my bless the Lord. Come on, because I refuse to think any other way. And I, this is no condemnation. You know, I know there's people in situations uh, where, where they, they have to have those things. But you know what? This is my conviction. That, that if I put my trust in God, yes. that somehow uh, He is going to keep me. And if He don't and I transition over... Come on, somebody, and I know I, I, he's going to. I feel like those, those three Hebrew children, when they're getting ready to go into the fire. <laughs> Come on, somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He's going to keep me in the fire. Come on, you can throw me in, whatever. And if I we perish, we perish. Come on. But the fire has not got power over the kingdom of God. How can the fire of this world burn the people of God? Somebody bless the Lord. That's no condemnation. Do not get upset at me on that. And do not get under condemnation yourself. But I know people's had the vaccination, done, been, done had the COVID five and six times. I know one guy, and uh, Brother Terry knows the pastor down in South America had the vaccines uh, and wound up dying with the disease. But see, let me tell you something. That it's going to keep going. It's not only it's not only uh, it's not only uh, sickness and disease that the enemy wants to put on us. It's all this political mumbo jumbo that's keeping our minds filled with fear. Yes. Come on, I stand here today and rebuke the spirit of fear that keeps allowing the enemy to come and attack us. Yeah. Somebody bless the Lord. Y'all accuse me. I've done got all slobbery here. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Turn with me to Ephesians. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to read this at the risk of, you know, most of the time, a lot of preachers. And I don't, you know what? I've got to the place uh, that whenever I go to a conference or something, I don't really go in thinking, well, i gotta, I got to preach. Some, some preachers just preach to the other preachers that's there. And the people sit there and they don't get anything. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, the body of Christ. Amen. Jesus didn't say to Peter, well, go feed the other apostles. He said, feed my sheep. Yes, right. Hello. But, uh, and you know, when you understand this, I'm not trying to, uh, uh, titles the way, the way people do, uh, do them anymore, put people in a box. They call me prophet for years and, and, and God would give me an apostolic work or I'd move into a place where I had to do apostolic work. And, and you know, people had this mindset. But see, I, I get outside that box. There's still an evangelist in me. Yeah, yeah. There's still something in me that wants to go out and, and, and begin to declare the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And give people the same opportunity you had uh, to come to the Lord and to know a living God. Amen. 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 
there's still people dying. Never having... Somebody love the Lord. Somebody said, well, what about... You know, what about the, the ultimate right all the way out there? I, I don't know about that, but I know God said for me to go preach the gospel and he that believeth shall be saved. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Ephesians 4, I'm going to start with verse 11. Probably read down to about verse 16. I'm about where I'm at. Get my eyes cleared up. And he gave some apostles. And see, the, the enemy has robbed us because people focus on those gifts. They are gifts given, but I want you to see what they're given for. Yes. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting or the maturing of the saints, for the wor work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, what are we talking about? Building up your cells. These gifts are given to the body of Christ to help you build up yourself. Yes. Yes. Come on. So when you come in on a Sunday morning or Wednesday night and hear Pastor Terry or somebody uh, other gift in this place, what are you doing? You're not just going, I'm going to go support Pastor Terry. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I really don't think he needs your support. You didn't call him. Amen. <laughs> Come on, not trying to be. But see, but you need this gift because God gave that gift for your edification. God gave that gift. Come on, I'm here because I want to give away. Sometimes I run across preachers and say, Well, that's God, I'm an apostle, and you've got to call me an apostle. That gift is not for you. The gift is for the body of Christ. And so until you give it away, it's doing no good. I watched back to Ashley. I'm, I'm going to brag on her a little bit. Don't get your head big now. <laughs> but I watched her serving. I watched her, come on, a real... I know this is going to stretch you because she's a woman, but a real, a real deacon, a real servant in the body of Christ. Deacon's not a equal with an elder. A deacon is somebody that serves. It was like those that served and waited tables uh, in the book of Acts. Now, that's another I was a rabbit trail just to see that I drop in there. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Father. God, let me hurry on. For the, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into unity. Amen. Somebody say unity. unity. Come on. Done properly and correctly, these ministry gifts will bring us into unity. It will bring us into the place where we are agreeing together in love and we're being edified together. Yes. Come on. Every joint beginning to supply to the other joint. Can you hear what I'm saying? See, and, and here, uh, back to Cheryl's comments, we got to watch our words because our words can either build somebody up or they can tear them down. Yes. Our words can either build ourselves up or they can tear them down. But see, if we use our words now and we begin to impart kingdom words, Back to the language. Last time I preached here about the language of grace. I know people that, that, that quote unquote preach grace, but yet they don't, have, they don't speak grace whenever they come around, especially other members of the body of Christ. I'm not here to argue the scripture. I'm here to do my part and use the gifting God's given me to impart to you and to edify you and to build you up uh, to the maturing of the saints. Somebody bless the Lord now. Thank you, Father. Till we all come in the unity of the faith into the knowledge of the Son of God. Not into... 
Somebody hear what I'm saying? I know people that are so bent on getting everybody to know uh, one particular little part of the scripture that they know that they're, they're just drive it and drive it and drive it. But what is the knowledge he's talking about here? The knowledge of the Son. That I may know him, we said it last night, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. And so what, I, what matures you and what matures me is whenever we know him, come on, why? Because he's the pattern son and he's the son that brings many sons into the same glory. Amen. Yes. There's not a glory up here for him and then a little bit lesser glory. Come on, into the same glory as he's in. Come on, somebody hear what I'm saying? He's the pattern, so he brings us into that same glory where he is. Hallelujah. Under, the, under a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, till we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lay in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love I know let me, let me stop here a minute just in case I know a, a, a sister told me one time she was aggravated with her husband and she just wanted to tell him off. And she said, I'm going to go tell him the truth in love. <laughs> and she, I mean, she just laid him out. <laughs> All the trouble with he he wasn't sure she loved him anymore. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's not the truth he's talking about. The truth we're talking about here is, is, is the truth that's in Christ. Yes, Share that truth that's in Christ. It's not to give you liberty to go out and tell somebody off or yes, cuss somebody out. Yes, I know y'all know what that is. <laughs> but it is... <laughs> Share the truth in love. But speaking the truth in love may grow up. Somebody say grow up. Grow up. Into him in all things, which is the head of the church. Now, that reminds me every time I read that uh, about a lady from Ohio years ago in the early 90s that came to uh, one of our conferences. Her name was Burl Whitten. And she said, I come here with a word from the Lord and said, I want you to listen up. And she started and she said, the Lord says, grow up, 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 grow up. And she did that about 15 minutes. I'm not going to do that, but she did that about 15 minutes. And after a while, we kind of got the point. The Holy Ghost began to bring conviction on the book. Come on. Why? Because even though uh, there were people in the midst that thought they were pretty well they weren't grown up. Somebody hear the, the word of the Lord. See, so the, the moral of that story is grow up. <laughs> okay? Amen. One more scripture. Colossians, just over. Colossians, the second chapter. And let's pick up about verse 6. And ye have, as ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him. Look at somebody and say, walk in him. Walk in him. As you have received him, walk ye in him. Now, I'm just going to say it like I'm like I, I'm going to use your, the language that you'll uh, understand. The devil uh, many times will tell you you can't walk right. Well, I tried, Pastor. I tried, but I just couldn't make it. See, that's a lie of the enemy. Because whenever you have received him, he has empowered you to walk 
Now that that doesn't mean if you if you slip up or mess up because uh, that, that you don't that you don't turn around and let that receive the forgiveness of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Come on, if you if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. You hear what I'm saying? But there comes a time whenever you have to realize I've got the power to do this. We've got the power in the name of Jesus over all the power of the enemy. Can somebody bless the Lord? Rooted and built up in him. Somebody say built up in him. Built up in him. Rooted. See, there's, there is a key. You've got to be rooted. We do... I've got some, I think the rose bushes did the best, but we did some other stuff and we took and we, we, we put them in the pots to, to root. You, 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 to, we made the clippings, put them in. But they've got to stay in those pots. You can't keep pulling them out and see if the root's there. They've got to stay in those pots. See, so if you stay where God's put you, now, I'm not talking about just in a physical location. God's put you in a spiritual location, uh, and, and, and He's ne come on, somebody bless the Lord, uh, and root, He's going to root you and ground you. Stay there long enough to let those roots go down deep. God said, "I'm a tree planted by living waters." I went singing, and my throat went so scratchy. God said, "I'm a tree planted by living waters." My leaves shall not wither, my roots go down deep. I lied, didn't I? <laughs> In all that I do, somebody say all that I do. God said I would prosper. That's in Psalm 1. I'm a tree of the Lord and I'm planted by Him. I mean, he's planted in him. Amen. If you're born again, he planted you right smack in the middle of the pot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right smack in the middle of uh, where you can get rooted and grounded. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. So established in what? Faith. Established in the faith. Build up yourselves on your most holy faith. Let your roots go down deep. And whenever they go down deep, come on, there's something about that watering, washing of the water by the word. Come on, when you get rooted, uh, there's something that, that happens whenever the word begins. To, Brother Terry will get up here and your roots will begin to soak up that water. It'll begin to drink in that water. Somebody bless the Lord. Amen. See, so... <clears throat> In the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Somebody say abounding. abounding. I like the way I like the way uh, the word puts that abounding. <laughs> He's not just going to come over here and sprinkle a little bit on you, mm -hmm. but He pours the washing of the water of the word on you, mm -hmm. that you can abound in faith. Amen. Stand to your feet with me real quick and I'll turn it back over to Brother Terry and maybe hear from somebody else. Whatever. Lift your hands with me, will you? God, we decree and declare today. God, that we are the people of God. We are the people of your kingdom. And God, we will build up ourselves. Say, I'm going to build up myself. I'm going to build up myself on my most holy faith. Now see, I know sometimes that, that kind of sticks in our mouth. My most holy faith. But see, it's your most holy faith you're building on. Why? Because uh, you're not holy because you're holy on your own. You're holy because he made you holy and your faith is holy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we decree and declare today a people of God that will build up, be built up on your most holy faith. 2023.
is a year whenever we're going to build on our faith and not on our doubts. We're going to build on what you say and not what everybody else says around us. God, we're going to build on faith, uh, hallelujah, and on the word of God. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, God, you're healing people in this place right now. God, there's a moving of the spirit I feel uh, right now moving all over this place, God. And in the name of Jesus, blood conditions. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. God, that 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 ugly, uh, that ugly condition in the blood, God, I thank you, Lord, that you bring healing to it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, uh, Lord, that the pain in the hips. Uh, God, I thank you, Lord, that you're healing those right now. In the name of Jesus, God, I bless you, Lord. Uh, God, I thank you, Lord, for it. God, I thank you, Lord. Uh, chest pains. God, I ask you, Lord, uh, God, even in the arteries and even in those places uh, where there is pain right now. God, you begin to bring healing. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we're building up our most holy faith right now. Build up your most holy faith. Talk to yourself like this. Every day you speak whatever symptoms come in your body, a uh, 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 dark spot on your abdomen, speak to it in faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Uh, whatever's going on, speak to it and enter into that place where you are building up yourself on your most holy faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless Brother Terry.